Yo, what's going down, film fans? Your homie Jay Green right here. So excited to talk about some Mission Impossible, so let's just jump right into it. Now, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is the seventh film in the Mission Impossible franchise. And in this one, we're seeing Ethan Hunt going up against an old foe and the entity. And we're gonna see some of those classic Mission Impossible traits. We talking about masks. <laughs> car chases. Man in the van, spy-ish. Running. And stunts. Now, one thing that the Mission Impossible franchise has done extremely well throughout the years is give us those elements that are synonymous with some of the best spy and action thrillers combined with some of those classic Mission Impossible characteristics. While still evolving the characters over the entire course of the franchise and increasing the action and the stakes that are important to the plot and the characters themselves behind that action so it's not just visual noise. And ever since Christopher McQuarrie and Tom Cruise teamed up for Mission Impossible Rogue Nation back in 2011, the two of them together have developed greater depth and detail each installment after that, keeping each movie fresh, fun, and suspenseful. And this movie right here, doubles down for real. I was so excited for this movie, my expectations were on level 10, and it delivered on all of those levels. Now let's start with our characters. Other than Tom Cruise, Ving Rhames' Luther Strickle is the most recurring character in all of the Mission Impossible films. And because of the quality of their acting, we can see over the course of the franchise the evolution of these two characters' relationship. Between Fallout and Dead Reckoning, Luther Strickle has become more than just that tech dude in the van. He's become a main voice of reason and one of the main cats that Ethan will lean on and actually look to for advice and what to do when he's kind of at a loss. And the best part of seeing this relationship evolve to that point is the fact that when Ethan is leaning on Luther, he's not actually straight up asking him, yo, what should I do? Where do I go? How do I make this happen? It's really in a situation where he's trying to figure it out himself, but Luther knows Ethan so well, he's watching this man struggle and realizes that in that moment, something needs to be said. Or he sees Ethan tripping on some Tupac ambitions of a writer-ish and realizes, yo, I gotta talk this guy down or he's about to make a huge mistake. That's real friendship when you can tell that your friend is going through some stuff and you step to him correct and talk him off of that ledge. I love their relationship. And the fact that he would allow himself to be wrong from time to time, get got from time to time, and definitely come up short from time to time, no pun intended, <laughs> just playing. But anyways, allow himself to be in those positions, number one, it humbles him as an actor and makes me like him that much more. But number two, it humanizes the character of Ethan Hunt, which means that the action and the stakes are more meaningful as they play out through the film and make it that much better. And Luther Strickle is at the forefront of most of those character moments and situations. We meet Benji way back in Mission Impossible 3, and at the time he was just a tech guy back in the laboratory at the home office, but in later films he takes a field test and now he is a staple on Ethan's team. I would consider Benji to be a little bit more of the comic relief and probably the engineer mainly behind the missions themselves. And between Fallout and Dead Reckoning, Benji has a lot more direct involvement with the action and the best thing about this franchise is it did its due diligence by showing us the growth of that particular character so when he is involved in the action we believe every minute of it. Another nuance that I love to the relationship between Benji and Ethan is the fact that even though Benji has taken all the tests necessary to be in the field Ethan is still going to feel protective over his friend and his co-worker but Benji a couple of times have had to put Ethan in his place and say look man you don't need to be babying me like this I've taken the test I've done the training 
training, I can do all of this. And I love the fact that Ethan will sit there, listen to him, respect it and understand it. But again, that's the dynamic in their relationship. So seeing the dynamic between Ethan and Luther, Ethan and Benji, and all three of them together is something that has evolved in a great way over the course of the franchise, making their relationship and their chemistry feel so much more believable and genuine. And that's very important, especially in a movie like this. Now in this movie, we see the return of Ilsa Faust, White Widow, and Kittredge, and we see the introduction to Paris, Grace, and Gabriel. Each of these characters right here play a significant role in the story, and they all got a swag of their own. One of the best things about these characters all together is the fact that some are bad and some are worse. There's definitely an ambiguous line to these characters that I don't want to define for you right here. You need to go watch this movie and see how some of the new and semi-new characters actually play out. Which is part of the fun and suspense of this movie. You don't really know which way they're going to go. It keeps you on your toes. Now I want to give a special shout out to Palm Clementine. Now if you're like me, you only know her as Mantis from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. But in this, she was fantastic. Her character's energy, threat, and style was top notch. There's a dope ass chase scene with her driving this big ass like Tonka truck. And for whatever reason, when I'm watching this happen, and I'm in amazement at how fun and exciting this whole scene is, because of her deadly focus, I kept getting Terminator 2 vibes. You know when the T-1000 was chasing after John on his little motorcycle, but he's in that big semi? Yo, dope as hell. The action in this film needs to be seen on the big screen, period. Now the particular scene that I'm talking about with Palm Clementine's character Paris has comedic, suspenseful, eyebrow raising, adrenaline pumping moments and they all play off of each other super well and fit great into the film. And it's a pretty long action sequence that's dope throughout but the action just gets better after that. Now for a few years we've been hearing about and seeing clips continuously all over the place of Tom Cruise doing this crazy ass motorcycle jump off of a cliff. This man's crazy. Now you would think that after all the time that we've seen it in trailers, commercials, featurettes, things of this nature, that this scene would probably be old by now. That maybe this scene wouldn't hit as hard when you actually see it in the movie. I'm gonna tell you like this, it hits even harder than you think. And in the context of the film, it's even more fun to see it play out. But you know what's even more funny about that? Is that's not even the most dope stunt in the entire film. Not even the most dope action sequence. Let me tell you a little something about the train sequence. Now, I ain't gonna really tell you much, but I'm gonna tell you like this, dope AF. This train sequence is next level. And just when you think the whole sequence and situation is about to be over, it keeps going. When you think it's about to stop, it keeps going more and more and more. And as it does, it ramps up the suspense, the action and tension. In my theater, I'm hearing people gasping like, oh, oh, oh what? no way, no way. Like, it's that much fun. Damn, damn. Now this movie right here is clocking in at about two hours and 43 minutes. And your homie right here loved every bit of it. Now for those of y'all out there with some weak bladders, I would suggest that you cut off any fluid consumption at least an hour or so before the film. Now side note, I was talking to one of my clients recently and she was telling me that she doesn't really care for franchises. When I asked why, she said because oftentimes franchises they get played out or they don't allow the actors to show range. True, sometimes. But for me, in the grand scheme of being a film fan, I'm not really tripping on franchises, trilogies, sequels, or a standalone film. My thought is, is it good? Give it to me. That's what this movie is. All of the above. This movie is a part one, but it does come to its own conclusion for now. The actors have all shown range throughout the films, and even though some of y'all out there would say that, well, nine times out of 10, Ethan is on the run, this is true, there still are deeper stories, more details, different levels of emotions between all of the actors and characters that they have to showcase and show range for in order for us to enjoy these movies. And if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes or the gross of each film as it's gone along, I think people are enjoying and not getting tired of this franchise just yet. Mission Impossible Dead Wrecking was fucking phenomenal. And I encourage all of y'all out there to run to the theater this week, this weekend, get your IMAX tickets, get your Dolby Cinema, because the picture, the sound, the quality, and the passion that Tom Cruise and team put onto the screen for you is well worth the trip to the theater. 
Side note, your homie is a huge Tom Cruise fan. And the fact that last summer Tom Cruise was holding it down with like a billion and change for Top Gun Maverick, and then this year he's coming out with Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, and a lot of people are saying that between Mission Impossible, Barbie, and Oppenheimer about to hold down the summer season, I think that Tom Cruise is about to be blazing two years in a row. And I'm not sure when the next part comes out, but if it comes out next summer, then you can count Tom Cruise as holding it down three summers straight. That's platinum status, baby. Let's go. What say you? Are y'all Mission Impossible fans? Do you got your tickets? Have you seen it already? Comment below. Let me know what you thought about my review. Let me know what you think about the movie. Your homie, Jay Green, I'm out.